Our second replay game tonight is from Football Park between Glenelg and West Torrens. Glenelg had made a lot of changes. In fact, they've changed every position. Stephen Kernahan coming back from suspension, an important one for them. For West Torrens, Glenn Elliott didn't play today. He was named in the side as a follower, uh, but pulled out of the match before the game started. Glenelg hadn't won a game in five tries. In fact, they had six tries when you consider they were beaten in the Sterling Cup as well. West Torrens form not too bad. They'd won two out of their first five. They'd stretched West Adelaide and Sturt in the last two weeks. Graham Campbell had said on Friday night in Seven News that if Glenelg couldn't win, it was the end of the road as far as a five was concerned. We pick up the match at the beginning of the third term. Your commentators, Ian Day and Peter Marker. At the commencement of the third quarter, the Tigers leading by a point. Not a good bounce. McInerney belts it away. Farquhar's on the ball. Coming through for Torrance was Downey, but the short kick was marked by Peter Keary. He's asked to play on by the umpire, then goes short and finds Farquhar. The Tigers didn't have a good second quarter. Eight goals were kicked by the Eagles. Farquhar goes long. Kernahan in front, didn't take the mark. Picking up McFarlane to McGuinness. Through it goes. Well, what a good start to the third quarter. Two goals, McGuinness. 9-9 for Lil, Torrens 8-8. Yes, it was Kerry who sent them in. But the ball came off the fingers and that was a brilliant handball from McFarland, who Peter said has gone off the half-back line. He's on the half-forward flank, obviously running on the ball as well. And the handball over to, to McGuinness was spot on. Kick number 12 got his second goal. McGuinness, who left the ground in that uh, second quarter, looked like he could have a leg injury. Kerry again, got it down. McInerney play too badly. Motlock completely missed that. Robson collected it. A high kick. Duthie from behind. Oh, good mark. No, he's not paid. Recovers well. Glenelg's best player, Duthie. Farquhar. McGuinness stayed down. Collier was grabbed. McGuinness tackles. Another good tackle from Simons. Robson plays it in front of him. In comes McGuinness. Out of bounds it goes. McGarry medalist had a scintillating first quarter. Didn't do much in the second. Out on the full it was. In right the free kick. Not a good kick. Simons takes a mark. <laughs> <laughs> what a character that Shimmel Bush is, Peter. Poor old Shimmer. He's got he's got that many whacks around the head today. He's not quite sure what this game's all about at the moment, but G's played well. He's not too happy about Enright putting the ball in his direction. Kick number eight, Simons. Kernahan couldn't take the mark. McInerney's caught. Players stack up and the umpire will bounce it. Yeah, Shimmer considers that marking is not, uh, not one of his duties. Robson, Kernahan, Filippo. Close to the boundary line. Hanna, Robson, Filippo. Good running movement, but the kick's not a good one. In front, Duthie, a good mark. Plays it on. Carey wants it. It won't go in that direction, though. Kernahan up. No mark. He's not marking as well today as I've seen him. Kazuro. Kazuro. Kazoli. Pretty hard to get the old tongue around. Down goes Walsh. Inglis. Not a good handball. Walsh dies on top of it. McDermott to Simons was good. He put it on the ground. Out it goes finally for a ball in. 9-9 nine, nine the Bays. Eagles 8-8. Eight, eight. Throw in half forward right flank. Looks like Simons is going for the ruck. Kerry comes into it now. Simons was there. He gets the thump away. Downey over to Kim Dillon. Back towards centre wing. Schimmelbush, who had a great second quarter, got Torrens right back into the game. The heavy bodies go in. Dillon is tackled high. Walsh wants holding the ball, and he is granted his wish. Walsh from the half-forward right flank. Kernahan wants it in the air. That's where it's going. Flanagan right there with that player. Kernahan, one, two, grab. Can't complete it. Downey and Robson out the back there. Quickly fuller, but it's taken a Murphy, it was, but taken away by Robson to Filippo. Dillon has run down but illegally so, and gets the free kick on the half-back line. Plus 15 metres. Dylan, who had a sparkling second quarter as well, gets kick number 11, but it's taken by Walsh. He's been one of Bay's better players this afternoon. Gee, they've made some 
changes in this second half. They've got Stringer in the back pocket. He started centre, had a spell at uh, centre wing. But it's English who gives a chance to Hannah in turn Schimmelbush. The Eagles go forward again up towards Johnson off the side of the boot. It's Lindsay. Or drop the centre. Hasn't played well at all. The bottom of the pack is Stringer, but the umpire will come in and bounce centre half forward. Torrens in attack. Bruce Lindsay just doesn't look right. Seems to have, have had a drop in confidence. He gets that one away. Stringer snares it. A quick kick will find Duthie. Certainly played well. Puts it over to Maynard. Maynard's a runner. He sweeps it wide towards McFarlane, who's gone to half forward now from half back. Back to Duthie. Strangely enough, the Bays are running again. Kernahan on the lead. Uses the body. Over the top it goes Collier. In right short. That's marked by Dillon. Kim Dillon. Who kicks the ball very well. Downey. Mark Downey, who took the place of Glenn Elliott. Boy, oh, Inglis was uh, into carry then. Took the mark. But the uh, Glenelg Ruckman is going to get the free kick. Handballs it to Duthie. Enright's behind McGuinness. He knocks it away. The handball came out to Flanagan. To Downey. Carey is too far under it. Having the run of the ball is Tom Hank. That's going to go out. No, the umpire is going to give a free kick, and it will go to Tom Hank. Yes, the tackle was put on too long, holding the man. Hank, who was interchanged in the second quarter, kicks Torrens in from centre wing, a high kick to the half forward line. Hannah gets up high, thumped away by Farquhar. Carter there as well. Carter will need support, gets it out wide from Hank. Torrens over the half forward line. On the lead now is Peter Johnson. Getting there first was Seabohm. Stringer wants the handball. It comes back. Comes dangerously across ground. Here's a match in two. Walsh and Hill. Hill trying to get round that player. Does it well. Lindsay wants it short. In towards centre half forward it goes. Oh, left behind Stringer. In defence, Scott Salisbury jammed onto the boot of McDermott. Back towards Simons. Simons on the left leg. Got it round towards Maynard. Leaving it behind, however, was Downey. Morell couldn't get the kick away. Simons gets spoiled by Morell. Well done. Pozzoli has the chance now. He got it from Collier. Simons again. High to the half-forward line. Using his body well was Murphy, but Filippo will get back on the ball first. Paddles it towards the line and out of play. Looks in a bit of trouble there. It looks to be Pozzoli. The wingman who had a magic first quarter has been a little bit quieter since then. Kernan gets the easy fly. Chance to Marshall to let the football behind. Close to the line. Cleverly keeps it in play. High up towards full forward. The bodies go in. Quickly planning and here's a chance for Guinness. Round onto the left leg into the open goal. He goes. Goal up. Oh, touched off the fingers. Touched there by Morell. Well done. And a certain goal. Obviously, if it went through the middle, touched. And therein lies someone's left foot. Make it just the boot, not the foot included. Oh, I'd have a nightmare if that was the foot. See, out it goes. The umpire will ball it in. Doesn't McGuinness look superb in flight? He's got uh, probably more balance than I've seen. Yes, there's the foot without the boot. McFarlane, here's a chance onto the left boot. The kick's terrible. Hodson in front. Flanagan it is, in fact, a good mark. Oh, the kick has got distance, that's about all. Duthie read it well. Kerry wants it at centre-half forward. Long goes Duthie. That wasn't well put either. Flanagan didn't do a good, good job with it. Kernahan off hands. No Glenelg players there. Collier, out. The game has tightened up a bit. Still hasn't got his boot on, Lee Robson. Perhaps he doesn't need it. Up he goes. Did it well to Downey, but Downey didn't do it too well. He dives on top of it now. The umpire will have a, a repeat bounce. Yes, the game's tightened up. A lot of free-flowing football in that second quarter when the Eagles kicked eight. Lindsay goes against Kernahan. McGuinness at the bottom of the pack, I think. No, it was McDermott. 
that famous boot. He hasn't got a foot in it, Peter. That's one thing I can tell you. Not yet. Kernahan, McFarlane, goal. That's how easy it is when you know what you're doing. McFarlane has got one. Winnell 10-10 now to the Eagles 8-8. Yes, well, surprising. A little uh, pressure put on there, McFarlane, who snared the ball from the, the throw-in. But the Bays haven't been doing it easily in attack all day. Michael Murphy has been moved from centre half forward to full forward. He's back on the half forward line at the moment. But across that half forward, Simons can't get in either. And it's uh, left to the odd sortie from the Rovers and run on Ruckman. Carey and Inglis. Neither player can get it out. Lindsay's handball to Pillmore was superb. Motlock sells the dummy and goes straight down the field. Kernahan wants it. He's outnumbered though. McGuinness missed it. Enright, McInerney, Motlock, that's McDermott, he gets rid of it very quickly. Three Glenelg players, they can't seem to get clear, finally McDermott. Kernahan, beautifully done, great body work, Flanagan's not happy about it, matter of fact he's distressed. Did he have a visit last week, Peter? <laughs> Oh. I think he got invited out. Was he the brother got invited out Tuesday night? I think he was. <laughs> he would have had to restrain the, uh, I think the, the adjectival part of his phrases then. In comes Kernahan. Normally a good kick through the centre. Splits the middle for his second. 11-10 the Tigers. The Eagles 8-8. Marked by Tom Hank. 14-13 Glenelg, 10-8 West Torrens. They go to the outer side. Schimmelbush been a fine player for the Eagles all afternoon. Oh, that's a beautiful pass. Out there it's Collier. Has the luxury of a bounce. Well shepherded by Quazole as he goes to the half forward line. Thumped down. Trip can't quite get there. Simon's well back from his half forward line or maybe he's been moved to wing. We'll find David Marshall in that posse. Looking for the handball pass, finds it now. Walsh, a good performer all afternoon, drives long in towards full forward. Flanagan, Kernahan in front. The ball comes to ground quickly. Robson almost tackled by Motlop. Gets it wide. Doothy's going to make a charge at the ball. Got a shocking bounce. Hannah. Long to the half forward line. No one home. Dylan over the back to Hill. Trying to get the handball out. Salisbury, well done. Walsh under pressure. Back to Maynard and the Bays will come away. Maynard will run it clear. Duthie again for the Tigers. I think he's been their best player today. Swings it in, but not a good kick. That was kick number 17, and it went straight to Mark Downey. Glenn Elliott didn't take up his position in the Eagles team today. Back it goes. Maynard drops it. Pilmore makes a break. Down he goes. There's a free after disposal. Kazuro's being questioned about the, uh, the manner in which Pilmore went down. And... Uh, Apparently he had similar queries put to him last week. Kevin Hills at centre half forward. And he'll line it up for the Eagles. Oh, they obviously need goals. That's a high ball. It's coming back with the breeze. I think he's got it. He has. Two goals, Kevin Hill. The Eagles now 11-8. The Tigers 14-13. That's an important goal for West Torrens. It will give them confidence and maybe they can start a run like they had in the second quarter when they booted eight goals in a great display. But it was foolish football by the Bay defence then because what Glenelg didn't want was an early West Torrens goal. Peter Carey against Dirk Inglis. Both have done a lot of work today. Carey gets that down. Farquhar snares it. The handball not really effective. To Torrance, it's Cazzoli, but Marshall intercepts. He's got it now, but down he goes. Holding the ball, the crowd yelled, but went over the line for a ball in. Throw in, half forward, right flank. Vanilled by 23 points. Garter against Robson. The bodies go in. Robson gets the tap down, looking for trip. Has to go and get it himself, almost tripped. And in go the bodies. Cazzoli is number 35, and the umpire will come in and bounce. Wouldn't be surprised to see a throw in after this. It's very close to the line, although the umpire brings it back a couple of metres. Half forward, right flank. Garton against Robson. Line four. And I think he'll have to bounce that one again. Oh, a throw. No, a push in the back. McDermott from the half forward, right flank. Kernan, who's had a tremendous battle with Flanagan, gets the leap away. Fine mark. Nothing can Flanagan. 
needed to do on that occasion. He's had a lot of conversations with the umpire this afternoon. But on this occasion, it was a great grab by Kernahan, no questions. And he's got the kick about 35 metres out. Kernahan, kick number nine coming up. He's booted 3-2. Early, he didn't, uh, he didn't mark the ball all that well, although he's got eight now. Kernahan towards the lake end, kick underway. The umpire said that's going to be offline one point. He's missed a couple, Kernahan. So, uh, hasn't got a lot of strength in his kick. They, they float a bit towards the end. Flanagan's kick to Hank is spot on. Certainly a good kick, Flanagan, and he's played quite well today, too. That's Robbie Morrell. A big improvement for the Eagles, but that's not improvement. The handball just didn't meet its mark. Tom Heck could do nothing with it. Our boundary side camera there is uh, going to show an action shot of the boundary umpire. Can't get much closer than that. That's Barqua. Kicks a long ball. And uh, free kicked and marking the ball was Robson. Schimmelbush in the middle. He plays it on and concedes ground. He's fighting fresh air at the moment, Schimmer. Up goes Maynard, no mark. Pilmore has caught, he didn't have the ball and he's going to get a free kick. Plays it on immediately, very short. That's Collier. A long ball to full forward. One out, Hamill, one-hander. That's a mark and that is a goal. Well, a good reply from the Eagles. Two goals, Hamill. 12-8 now they are. The Eagles for nil, 14-14. Still a lot of hard work to be done here at Football Park. A lot of football left. Carey gets it down to Motlop. Legged, according to umpire Argent, was Peter Carey. And the big chap looks pretty tired. Simon's on a lead, but Kerry's going to swing it back to centre half forward. Garland stands his ground, but Robson takes a ripper. There's that man Schimmelbush again. Kick number 20. Played a super game. Up goes Hill. Couldn't take the mark. Walsh is being held by Hill, and he'll take the free kick. What a magnificent leap. But Schimmelbush, he's been a fine player for West Torrens. He's been the link man, as Peter Marker said very early in the piece. Oh, some uneducated leaping over there. The ball comes to Pozzoli for the half-forward line. Stringer almost, zero down there. Carter, first recover. Wants support, gets round the first one. Gives out the handball. Here's a chance now for Pilmore. Heads for home, chips it short, but oh, he's well offline and just manages to get a point. Torrens do the attacking. And gee, once they get their confidence moving, they certainly look a good side. Wayne Stringer kicking off to the Bays. He hasn't played well today. Started in the middle. He's played just about every other spot. Peter Carey holds his ground. Inglis knocks it away. McDermott's the runner. In comes Robson. Beautiful interception. A three down the field, and uh, I don't really agree with that one. Peter Carey was committed to the movement. Free kicks on, and uh, Peter Johnson's got it. Off comes Stringer. On goes Murphy. Kick number five for Johnson. He's kicked four points. Can he get a major? Yes, he has. Just when the side needed it. 13-9, Torrens, Glenelg, 14-14. Peter Johnson's got the ball well all afternoon, or when he's been given the opportunity, that is. But what a game Lee Robson's playing at centre-half back. He's been too good for Michael Murphy, and now he's beaten Garten at one stage. I think they had Kernahan there as well, but he's a very rugged player. Kicked straight down ground, and Peter Carey, as Peter said, was committed to the umpire rule. Got an FAD, a very important kick for Torrens. Two straight kicks, the difference. Kernahan against Inglis. Torrens have got some momentum now. Glenelg will have to do something about it. Farquhar and Motlop put him in trouble. Carter missed it. Through came Seabone. Dermot couldn't mark it. Down he gets away with it. Back to Inglis. Inglis high. Collier searching for it. Spilled Salisbury. I think he had enough of it. Shimmer doesn't think so. What a character, Peter. 
figure be in fields Salisbury kicks it to the attack side of centre no mark the umpire calls for a play on Fillmore comes away with it the Torrens are playing pretty well they lost the ball in most of the players Carter did it beautifully to Hamill good football Carter Hamill kicks his third and Torrens are playing very very good at the moment very very well at the moment 14-9 they are Glenelg 14-14 Brilliant football, West Torrens, but well done, Hamill. Evans above, he's one metre out, and he's put the ball out in the Grange golf course. It is up on the roof, and that's where it will stay for the afternoon. They'll have to go and get another football, although the kids, have they got it back? Yes, they got it back. I don't know how they got it down from there, but it finally trickles back down over the top. But Hamill certainly went for home. Torrens starting to run. Exactly the same they did in that second quarter. They have reduced their 29-point deficit to five, to yes, five points in the first 10 minutes of the game, and they've got a real run coming up now. The Eagles would have to be favourite with the bookmakers at the moment. Kernahan and Inglis again. Inglis gets it away with a backhander. Seabone has it stolen by Collier. Hamill and Johnson in front. Well, I thought Hamill was going to make a late leap, but Johnson stood his ground in front and took a very strong mark. The Eagles are on fire. As important a shot as Johnson's had for a long time. He's kicked one four today from six kicks. He now has two four. The Eagles have hit the front. 15-9 to Glenelg, 14-14. having a room of my own, but well, still living with the family. That's what I call an improvement. The new garden ensuite with a spa bath's a great improvement. Having our own bathroom's a great improvement. Oh, being given a 10-year guarantee is what I call an improvement. A.B. Jennings Home Improvements. For over 25 years, we've done nothing but improve. We've got the deals, we've got the deals, you'll find our deals unreal, on Sigma Cold Express, our deals are the best, in Adelaide, more for Vail and McGill, your motor's Mitsubishi's got the deals. <laughs> painting and decorating you'll find everything you need right here there's the full range of British paints including new vinyl plus color cards brushes rollers and all the friendly advice you need to get the job done right right when it comes to hardware there's something in store for everyone right here local hardware store Kirkham the Bays gets to lift them. Kernahan thumps it clear. Doofy didn't have anyone to give it to. Robson again. What a game he's playing. Carter very clever to Inglis. Inglis gets run down. The umpire plays it on. Carter again. Getting some important touches. The pack forms. Here's a chance. Kevin Hill. The ball eludes him. Salisbury in. Dispossessed. Here's a chance. Schimmelbush. Very close to the boundary line, gets a high one. The ball's still in play. Poor old Shimmer, he's holding his head. Ian Day, that would be the, the tenth or twelfth time he's been hit high, but I don't think any of them have been intentional. Certainly not, Peter. He's so close to the ground that any bump hits him there. But I wouldn't be surprised if his brains were scrambled after this afternoon's effort. But what a fine performance. Motloff on the ground, trying to give the bays a lift around the pack. Torrent by a point. At quarter time, they were five down and then kicked eight straight. Fine effort to come back. Doofy. Maynard. High. The Bays without any method at all at the moment. Kernahan front spot. Good mark. Now they 
need a run. Turn ahead from half back flank. That kick is not a particularly good one. Robson again. Oh, what a stopping block he is at centre half back. He'll transfer it over towards Hannah. McGuinness late on the scene. Hannah put his foot up for protection. McGuinness didn't like it at all. He's down. Here's a chance as they go into attack now. A high one from Cazzoli going one up towards full forward. The back of the pack. It's been taken away there by um, Maynard. Got it over to Seabomb. A bad bounce all round. Beautiful for Inglis. Heads for home with a long one going right across the face of goal and will go through for the minor score. And let's have a look back at McGuinness who took one in the, the wrong part of his body. McGuinness all right. Hannah okay as well. Nearly 13 minutes into the last quarter. Kicking off is Kazuro. Kevin Hill playing very well late in this game. On his knees now, he shuffles it back to Fillmore. Fillmore getting a lot of touches too. Shimmer is underneath that. Lost it completely. Peter Carter is a great player in this last quarter. I think it's bounced through. Oh, what a magic goal. Three to Carter. 16-10 the Eagles. Liddell, 14-14. Well, talk about confidence. Torrance could do anything at all at the moment. Take a trip across the water. But that one from Peter Carter, he's been a dangerous player all afternoon. Kick number 10 on the left leg. He bounced it through. But Torrance have got an eight-point advantage. His third goal. Inglis and Kernahan. Inglis gets it away again. They're winning it out of the centre, the Eagles. Carter's in the middle of it again. Kicks it off the ground. Kevin Hill. Oh, they've got a lot of confidence, the Eagles. They don't want to give this one away. Hamill knocks it away. The crumbs. Johnson. Over to Dillon. He can put that one down for a goal. Or oh, they're on fire. Three to Dillon. 14-14 the Tigers. 17-10 the Eagles. Centre bounce. Carey and Inglis towards Schimmelbush. This time Marshall takes it out of the centre square to the half forward line. In front Downey. Duthy gets support from McGuinness. After he hurt his leg there at the end of the first quarter, when a player came down, it appeared to be on his ankle or on his calf muscle. He hasn't been the same player, that's for sure. A pile up of players, centre field, another bounce. Torrance player in a bit of trouble, Schimmelbush. We've told you repeatedly. He's taken a lot of head knocks this afternoon. Inglis. It's beaten Carey. Cazzolo will get a free kick for a high tackle. And the free kick. He's been a player that's caught my eye. David Cazzolo. Come up through the ranks. Cazzoli. He's come up through the ranks. And he certainly played very well at centre wing. Short to Downey. Came in when Glen Elliott pulled out. Hank. Robbie Morrell. He'll go for home with a long one right up towards Hamill at full forward. Garden there in front. Off the fingers, Hill. Oh, so easy. And Hill kicks goal number three. And Torrance have got their 22nd on the board. 12 for the quarter. That is amazing. I don't know what the record is for the last quarter. It's uh, 14 or 15, I think. But uh, yeah, three-quarter time. It looked as though it was going to be a tough last quarter. The Eagles have made it a cakewalk. Robbie Morell's played well. He kicked that ball forward. Kevin Hill read it beautifully off hands and stared his third. This must be heartening for Glenn Elliott. He came onto the ground the last couple of weeks and he led the team. And I think the results are showing now. The Bay's absolutely humiliated. Inglis again. The Schimmelbush. How often have I said that? Up towards full forward. Johnson almost. Through goes Scott Salisbury. He's collared. Maynard likewise. Pilmore goes in against that player. And I'm thinking that all the Nelk supporters would love to hear that siren right now. Torrens would like it to go on forever. Bounce down half forward line. Tapped away. Chance for Carter. He'll need support. Finds it now. Hamill. Short to Hill. And the Torrens forwards don't appear to have any players standing. Hill kick number 15. Very dangerous player on the half forward line. Kevin Hill heads towards the golf course end again. The umpire indicates he's got his uh, 
fourth goal. He's kicked three in the final quarter, 23-11 to 15-16, and we've played over 30 minutes. 13 goals, the Eagles. Triple nil one in this last quarter. And uh, it's not very often you see this type of onslaught. 13 goals in a quarter. Incredible. You would never have fought it at three-quarter time. But the Eagles have been superb. Ten about Carey getting his weary body together to go against Inglis. Again, we see Inglis dump the ball out to Schimmelbush. Carter, cleverly to Robbie Morell, who wasn't uh, ready for it. Back to Schimmelbush. Carter's down at centre field. Might be just knocked up from getting kicks. And coming across is Gavin Walsh to take a fine defensive mark. He plays, on. McGuinness. He plays on to McGuinness. McGuinness hasn't played well since that injury. He got it to Farquhar. Farquhar on to Mac not McInerney, McFarlane. McFarlane to Simon. Simon's high. Up goes the pack. Motlop stays down. Scouts it well. But his kick is astray. The siren is gone here at Football Park. A big victory to the Eagles. 23-11 to Glenelg, 15-16. And that 13 goals in the final quarter by West Torrens against Glenelg was a record against that club. And what a performance it was after they were four goals, five behind at three-quarter time. The goal kickers, Kevin Hill, four, Carter, four, Dylan, three, Hamill, three, and Johnston, three. And for Glenelg, Kernahan, three, McInerney, two, Chris Duthie, two, and Tony McGuinness, two. And after the game, Ian Day spoke to Daryl Schimmelbush. 21 goals one end and two the other end. The wind wasn't that strong. No, it wasn't that strong. Uh, both times, uh, I think we kicked two short going into the wing, which was, uh, we had a lot of possessions, but we weren't getting the ball up there to score goals. 29 points down at three-quarter time. Did you believe you still had a chance? Well, uh, we did think we had a chance, and uh, it was a credit to all the players. They just got up and started running in the last quarter. It was magnificent. English gave you a big lift out of centre. Yeah, uh, Dirk's been down the last two weeks because he'd come up against some pretty good opposition in uh, Mark Mickham and uh, Frank Spiel last week, and today I think he won his own in the centre. It was excellent. Yeah. What, okay. make, what makes a team start to run? Earlier, you sort of you had your opportunities in the first quarter, but it wasn't, and all of a sudden you got a bit of confidence and you ran. Uh, what I think it was, we got a couple of quick ones uh, at the start of the last quarter, which, you know, we wanted to get the first one, but we got a couple of really quick ones, and then from then on, I think every player lifted and they started running. Right. Players down of confidence a bit. Uh, probably an all-time low since I've been at Glenelg. Uh, you know, I think someone was saying 71. Uh, we lost six out of seven. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I, I started halfway through the year and I didn't experience that. Uh, well, I, I can remember it. Yeah. it was pretty bad. But and, uh, we've just got to win one and uh, try and build from there, and we've, we've just got to make it next week. Doesn't take much to turn the corner, though, does it? No, it doesn't. We just need a, you know, a few players to gain a bit of confidence, probably. You know, a couple of breaks to go our way and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be back in it. Let's have a look at the stats from the game. A very disappointed Peter Kerry, no doubt. But uh, the kicks for Torrens, 232 to 190. The marks, 94 to 61. The handball, 78 to 104. A big advantage to Glenelg. Freeze, 29 to 23. Rucks, one out of the centre, 20 to 15. And scoring shots, 34 to 31. And I do feel a bit for Graham Campbell tonight. He's a lovely fellow, but uh, that doesn't win football matches and they've lost six straight, and they've got to play Woodville next week. So at least one team of the two is going to have a win. The game at uh, Adelaide Oval today was an important one between South Adelaide and Central District. They both had to win to keep in touch with the five. Let's have a look at the highlights from that game. South Adelaide coach Graham Corns continues to amaze. At 35 years of age and a veteran of over 300 games, he seems to be in as good a form this year as he has throughout his career. Ron Haitley's been a very consistent player for South Adelaide over the years, and he's enjoying a good season once again. South led at quarter time, 4-3 to Central, 2-3, despite the fact that Central was looking to the scoring end. John Sneebickler left the field at quarter time and came back with his left thigh very heavily bandaged. It didn't stop Sneebickler from playing a great second term. Splendid goal from centre-half forward. Graham Corns once again in the play. He's obviously relishing his role at centre-half back and it's helping him coach the side on the field. Paul Martin's had a very good year. He's in the state squad. Played another good game again today. Glyn Hewitt's been a very good contributor on a half-forward flank this season. He's played for a number of clubs and kicked over 470 goals in league football. This is one of them. Great kick from half-forward and through it went as South LA was growing in confidence. 
Hearn, and what's this from Corns? A one-hander from the veteran. Corns to Ivanov. Ivanov came to South Adelaide last year. He's been a very good player in the back pocket. Naley has tremendous pace. He couldn't play last week because of a hamstring injury. Probably the chap is going to rove with him in a week's time against Victoria Platten. Butler, but nobody home for South Adelaide. And Stephen Bohm, who's played good football in defence for Central District this year, relieves to pry his back pocket. And now one of the best passages of the first half. Peter Vivian, a veteran of over 260 games. Renee Van Dommel, Vivian's backup is tremendous. Provides great run from that centre wing. Drop punt on the run, and through it goes. Naley again. It's great to see Naley in good form with the state game so close. He was a marvellous player last year against Victoria. Haitley with a high one, and that's a very, very good mark by Snee Bickler. You'll notice the bandage there. That's a good shot of it on that left thigh. He finished up with five goals today, Snee Bickler. Central District got themselves into a great deal of trouble today with their handball. Martin swooped on that mistake. Hewitt waited for it to sit up. Snee Bickler barged his way through. And young Chapman's been a fine for South Adelaide, and through it went. South dominated the game after halftime, winning 19 goals, 16 to Central, 12 goals, 6. Snee Bickler got five, Chapman three, Hewitt three, and Naley three, and Connolly, Vivian, and Arushiak two each for Central. The best players, Alan Shields' best players from the advertiser, Bennett, Korn, Snee Bickler, Haitley, and Naley for South and for Central's Vivian, Bohm, Krieg, Hart, and Liversey. Well, the game at Prospect, we've spoken to Mick Noonan earlier in the program with Robert Odie. North won 2015 to Norwood 13-10. Dietrich 10, that's a great comeback for him. Arnold 3, Jarman 3 and Antrobus 2. Neville Roberts got 4 for Nord and Jim Michael Annie got 2. Julian Swinstead's best players were McAdam, Antrobus, Arnold and Armfield. And for Nord, Michael Aish, Keith Thomas, Greg Thomas and uh, Philip Gallagher. And at Unley today, Sturt won an even second half. They kicked 13 goals to... Uh, no, I'll, I'll correct that. 13 goals to 12. That's right, after half time. 24 19 to 16 9. Graham and Davies, 4 each. Painter and Filkey, 3. Motley, 2. Craig, 2. And Derrington, 2. McSporran, Sherpig, both 3. Shear and Simpson. Hollis has done his hamstring in again, unfortunately, for Sturton. Baines has a stretched Achilles tendon, and he'll have that uh, tendon, uh, that Achilles rather, in plaster for 8 weeks. And the best players from Andrew Both, who kicked. Uh, Kicked, I'm going well. He picked four winners today out of five. He did very well. His best players were Painter, Motley and Fry, and for Woodville, Macarath, Michael Fuller and Detman. So that's all the games. Let's have a look at the premiership table after today's round. West, Sturt, North, Norwood and Port. Great to see North up there in third place. And South, Torrens, Central, Glenelg and Woodville. And so to the goal kickers, Luders on top with Davies, 26 each, Robert, Schnee, Bickler, Linda, and Peter Johnson, I'm sure the Port Adelaide fans would love to see Timmy Evans back. That's it for Big Replay tonight. Hope you've enjoyed it. We've covered a fair bit. I think you'll agree. Tomorrow, it's VFL Day with the replay at 12.30, the live game at 1.40, Sterling Cup next Tuesday night, 8.30, Norwood against Footscray, and then 11.30 for the reserves next Saturday. Big Replay again at half past six next Saturday night. Hope you can join us throughout the week on 7 for your football. And to all the mums at home, mine in particular, have a great day tomorrow.